right, ladies and gentlemen, it is BQ. This is the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan, the number one YouTube channel for the Impact Wrestling fan. If it's your first time here, consider becoming a valued subscriber on the road to 7,000 subscribers. And that is the goal here sooner than later. Just wrapped up the Rebellion pay-per-view, and we're going to talk about it. I'm going to give you the results. I'm going to try not to get too deep into the matches. There's probably a lot of other podcasts that you want to check out um, on the tube tonight or on streaming platforms. But thank you for being here for the Impact Lounge. This is an audio-only version stream. Sorry I couldn't be with you via video today. So let me give you just the overall about this pay-per-view first of all. The Hard to Kill pay-per-view, which was in January, I gave that an A. To me, top to bottom, that was just the best pay-per-view that I've seen with Impact in years. This particular pay-per-view, Rebellion, enjoyed it, but I give it about a B, about a, a solid B. There was some really good on this show, and then there was some eh on this show as well. Again, if it's your first time here, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. We've got the top Impact Wrestling podcast and content uh, here on the channel. So this is the place uh, you want to be. Absolutely. So I give it a B. I give it a solid B. Um, watching the, the, the pay-per-view, enjoying the pay-per-view, sitting through it. They've, they've done such a good job with this, this fake crowd noise because at Hard to Kill, it didn't sound that good, and it's uh, continually sounded better and better. There was a couple matches today where it, it was a bit corny, a little, a little bit cheesy, but um, they did a good job with this. But uh, my first visual of this is, wow, that's a lot of red on the screen, uh, on the stage. Everything is black. Everything is white. Um, I, I would just love to see some other colors pop at me just a little bit more. Um, and I'll get into some reasons in a little bit why that is. But we're going to get into, first of all, Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. So I'm going to go through this card as we watched it. However, let's talk Rich Swan and Kenny Omega first because that's the main reason you guys are here and listening to my voice right now. Rich Swan, Kenny Omega, Impact World Champion versus the AEW World Champion. I sit here <laughs> giving this podcast wearing my Rich Swan Impact Wrestling World Championship shirt in support because I said I would. And uh, unfortunately uh, for him, he was not the victor. I think this was the outcome most of us truly did expect. There was... Uh, there, there was there was some of us who really were were keeping our fingers crossed, you know, because the way that this story was told from the beginning until now, even from Hard to Kill, Rich Swan taking the pin at Hard to Kill all the way to now, it was built in a manner that uh, Babyface was going to win, you know, was going to get the come up and show everybody wrong. Now, if you haven't heard my pitch for where they go with Rich Swan from here, I will get into that here in a second. And it's something that I think, I don't think I'm fantasy booking too hard. It's something that I think is very, very realistic storyline-wise where, where they're going to go with him from here. Now let's talk about the match. First of all, I'm going to give all these matches a letter grade. This match right here, the main event, I'm going to give it an A. The Moose versus Rich Swan match on Impact Plus, I thought was a better match than this, if I'm being honest with you. To me, that was one of the best impact matches I've seen in years. Uh, I was emotionally invested in both of them. I was very excited for this match when it happened with Omega and Swan. Uh, they, they talked about goosebumps and chills, and, and you know sometimes announcers say things like that uh, when you when it's not really realistic. But I I, I really uh, I really had chills when this match started. I was really legitimately pushing or pulling, I should say, <laughs> for Rich Swan. I uh, did not want to see the titles leave. Uh, I knew that there was the potential going into this pay-per-view that the tag titles and the world titles were going to leave the company. And uh, did that happen or not? We'll get into that in a little bit as well. But uh, I do give this match a solid A. There was a couple spots that I think that they went for that they weren't able to execute. They, they did some risky stuff, didn't fully pull it off, but it still worked because these are two phenomenal athletes I thought Rich Swan got a chance to show what he could do I, I thought I thought he was gonna have the opportunity to show us a little bit more I'm one of those people that love Rich Swan as a world champion 
I see it every day on social media. Oh, he's not he's not a main eventer. He's not a world champion caliber guy. Well, he's not a mid carder. Do you think he should be wrestling in the X division? He's he's a lot bigger than the X division at this point. And uh, this was a guy that had you know the WWE Cruiserweight title, which you can say what you want about that that title, but when you carry that title for the biggest company in the world, uh, compete at WrestleMania. Um, I think there's prestige to that. I love the Rich Swan's promo with Gia. We'll, we'll get into that. No, we'll talk about it right now. He did a backstage interview promo with Gia Miller. For those of you who are uh, who have followed me from the beginning, I should say even over the last several months, you know that the thing that I despise that Impact does, and I mean I despise it. I've I have contacted them and say I cannot fucking stand this is playing music in the background of the interviews. I mean, it makes my ears bleed, mainly because it's the same song every time throughout the entire show. And it's the We Own the Night theme, and it just continues to play throughout the whole show. During ba- during Mike, Matt Stryker and D'Lo talking, backstage interviews, going to a commercial, coming back from a commercial, the whole show drives me insane. And... You know, recently on Impact Plus, Tommy Dreamer had cut this backstage promo with tears in his eyes. And what's in the background? <laughs> Just some, some bullshit upbeat music. And then uh, on the last show, uh, might have been the same show, James Storm, or no, it was on Impact. James Storm cuts this great backstage promo interview. Talking about Bob Ryder, you know, who, who passed away months ago. And what's in the background? Whoa, whoa. We own the okay. So if you if you've been listening, you know I talk about this almost every podcast because it, it drives me that crazy. This particular backstage interview with Rich Swan had no background music, and how effective was it? It was night and day from what we see on the weekly show. You can he connects with the audience. He had passion, uh, emotion behind his voice. I loved it. I loved it. I just wish <laughs> there would have been more of that leading up to this. Every time you put that song in the background, you completely lose their ability, the, abil- the ability to connect with the audience. But this match here had Mauro Ranallo on commentary. And, you know, someone told me today, I, I have, you know, I have it on good authority that he's uh, he's coming to AEW sooner than later. Well, I have it on even better authority, trust me, and, and you guys know I have uh, my sources, I have it on better authority that he would like to work for Impact Wrestling. It's a smaller company, smaller personnel. He has the ability to work from home. He has his home studio. So I'm not saying he might not end up in AEW, but th- these rumors that Tony Khan brought him here for this and then he's going to AEW after, that's not the case at all. This has been in the works for several months, and Impact is very interested in bringing him on full-time, but we don't know if that's going to happen or not. He doesn't even know. It's, it's not even a money thing at this point. Uh, you know that he, there's a history with him, and he, he values certain things. Obviously, the Impact schedule uh, is beneficial for him, too. So, um, But the match, it, it had two referees, Aubrey Edwards and uh, Brian Hebner. At first, I thought they were both going to be in the ring, and I was like, what a clusterfuck that's going to be. Uh, But that wasn't the case. Kenny Omega came down with the Good Brothers, and Rich Swan, which (laughs) when I saw that, I was like, please don't come back down by yourself. And he he came down with Eddie Edwards and uh, Willie Mack. The one good thing about Rebellion as a whole was that there wasn't a lot of fuckery on this pay-per-view. You know, Impact is, you know... Rest, breath bumps and dirty finishes and all that, you know, real just paint-by-number crap, but they do it, you know, they overdo it. Uh, there was an episode of Impact about a month ago that I think every match uh, on the card had either a dirty finish or a ref bump. You know what I'm saying? So they did a good job with that. This, this uh, They made it matter. When they did that stuff this episode, they made it matter. But he did have uh, – Eddie uh, Rich Swan did have Eddie Edwards – and Willie Mack um, by his side. 
one had had me thinking. It had me thinking: Is Eddie Edwards next in line to face Kenny Omega? Uh, I remember if, if you guys had, depending on how old you are, when when Rocky it was like Rocky two, when Apollo Creed got knocked out by uh, uh, Ivan Drago, and then it kind of shows, you know, him him in the lap, his head in the lap, so you know, so to speak, of Rocky, and him looking up at, at Drago. I got that vibe a little bit at the end of this match here. Uh, with Eddie looking up at Omega, but they didn't really communicate that to us. So, you know, I could be wrong there. I really thought Kenny, not Kenny, but I thought Swan was going to kick out of the uh, one-wing angel Angel this match. I thought that was the story they were kind of telling. Because I was thinking to myself, if Rich Swan loses his match, at least he's going to kick out of that finish. At least he's going to be the dude to do that. And you got to give Rich Swan all the credit in the world because he went into this. I mean, they've painted him on, painted him on TV as the underdog, uh, his, the own, his own uh, exec VP from Impact Wrestling doesn't want him to win. Uh, the, the wrestling world, kayfabe-wise, didn't think he was going to win. People have criticized his championship reign, which he's never had a bad match in Impact. Never. Uh, they've criticized that. They uh, won't even feature him on AEW or even mention that he was wrestling, you know? So you, you gotta give you gotta give Rich Swan some like serious props here because he he's I think endured a lot, um, and ha- it hasn't looked him out of this looking particularly strong. I think he he looks good in defeat. Don't get me wrong, but you're talking he took a loss at Hard to Kill. He took the loss here. You know where's Rich Swan's comeuppance? Maybe he's the one that's gonna win the title back down the line. Maybe Kenny Omega has this title for the whole entire year. We th- we were under the assumption that he was that Kenny was going to win the title because Impact wants Kenny on their show, right? I mean, let, let's let's be real. It hasn't helped a whole crap load in the ratings, but let me let me put this out there first for those of you who thought, oh, well, ratings matter. Yeah, ratings do matter, but live live viewership is not what it once was. Okay. I watch, as I always say, I watch AW, NWA, Impact. I don't watch a single one of those shows as they air. I'm just as uh, a big a fan as many of you. You know, okay, so my, my viewership number doesn't count. Does it mean I don't care about the product or I don't want to watch the show? I just don't. I choose not to watch it live. I choose to watch it when I, when I feel like I can focus. You know, I have four kids, folks. It's pretty difficult for me to to have my TV time at night for for the shows that I really really want to watch. And you know I've used this for an example. Now that EC3 is a part of Ring of Honor, I have some interest in Ring of Honor. That doesn't mean I'm going to watch it as it airs. You know, so any other extra any extra eyeballs that Impact is getting, it just because they're not a live viewer, it doesn't mean that people aren't DVRing the show and watching the show or watching it online elsewhere. Or downloading Impact Plus and watching the show there. Because remember, Access TV isn't the most accessible network in the world. I'm not going to talk this long for every match, I promise you folks. Uh, I'm just kind of getting into a deep um, with this match right here. Don Callis did a great ring announcement for Kenny Omega off the bat. They really painted all, all personnel involved on the AEW side as, as good, hit, good strong heels. Impact is coming from a place of an underdog big time. We are almost four months to the year, and they've been the underdog in this the entire time. There has to be a comeuppance of, <laughs> of some sorts at some point. But I, I'm definitely one of those people who didn't want the Impact title and TNA title on uh, AEW Dynamite. I love AEW just like I love Impact, but I don't want to see... Impact's my show. That's my company. I didn't want to see the title over there. The match was a little more slower and methodical at the beginning. I thought it was going to be very, um, very back and forth and, and, and flippy, if you will. Very, just very back and forth and quick. That didn't totally happen. There was there was a little more uh, match psychology than I was uh, was totally expecting. I talk about ref bumps mattering. When Swan went for the handspring cutter and and you know Kenny shoved the ref in the way and Brian Hebner took it. That was so well done, you know, because it mattered. It did. There was it was a night full of ref bumps, and and you know what I mean. Like so, when it happened, it was like wow, that that's an that was amazing. So I thought that was um, I, th- I thought that was really cool. 
Uh, Rich Swan hit a, <laughs> I guess the Rich Inoku driver. <laughs> Mauro Ranallo is so funny with his name sometimes. I've never heard him call it that. But the commentary was great. The commentary really told a story. And uh, for those of you who've been listening to me for a while know that, I, that Ma- Josh Matthews was driving me crazy on commentary. I used to really like Josh Matthews' commentary at one point. Uh, and I like Josh Matthews, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he's part of the company. But there were, his, his commentary started getting so bad uh, towards the end. And, and there was no story being told for what we were seeing in the ring. And... and you know, I remember years when I was watching WWE that I felt that way about Michael Cole. I was like, dude, he's not, he's not enhancing the story that I'm watching in front of me. You know, uh, too many sidebar conversations and jokes and everything like this. Oh, my gosh, so, so just laser focused on what was going on in the ring. So it was, um, it was really good on the commentary side. But Kenny, excuse me, oh, excuse me, folks, that cough came out of nowhere. So Kenny Omega did win. He is the new Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, nothing we didn't expect. I, I went with Rich Swan as my prediction uh, because I was unwilling to admit that he was going to lose. But uh, that was the case. So let's talk about the first match of the show. And I'm going to go a lot quicker into these. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments about all the matches and, and, and what you thought. But I do give that match, um, and I'm going to say about an A-. minus. We'll, th- we'll throw it there. Okay, so TJP, this is the opening match. TJP versus Josh Alexander versus Ace Austin. This was for Ace Austin's X Division Championship. I was, uh, I'm on record of saying I really wanted this to be TJP versus Josh Alexander. TJP was a former champion. I thought it made more sense for him to just carry the title up to this point. Because in the storytelling, they did start trying to create heat and tension between TJP and Josh Alexander. So Ace Austin was like the third wheel in that, uh, with that being said. So I thought this... Um, I thought it was unnecessary to do a triple threat. I really do. The, it was a killer match. The great, the best parts were when TJP and Josh Alexander were doing stuff by themselves. But uh, Ace Austin, you know, he showed out in this match as well. So don't 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 get it confused. He he um, he he looked very good. But I just thought uh, they could have really built something special with a build. And the two matches that TJP and Josh Alexander had on Impact were phenomenal. And all I could think was like, wow, well, what if we were like seeing this uh, play out for the first time now? I, I think they wrestled when Josh was part of the North, and that was different. But now that they're both singles guys, Josh Alexander, the baby face, all that good stuff, like this was their first time going at it uh, when they wrestled several uh, months ago. I just kept, I kept thinking, man, if this was the first time we were watching this match, we would be just floored because that's how good everything they were, uh, did was <laughs> everything they were doing was. Josh Alexander had become the ex, uh, number one contender, winning the uh, Revolver match, which was an amazing match. It would have meant so much more if he just remained the number one contender all the way to this pay-per-view to take on TJP. But instead, he wrestled the next night on Impact and lost. So even though he lost that match and TJP has lost multiple matches, they somehow both got X Division title shots here. So that's the kind of story that I don't enjoy. That being said... This was probably, um, if it wasn't the best match on the show, it, it was uh, it was top two. Um, they gave uh, I, I give this an A. This was another A for me. Um, I, I said Swan Omega's about an A minus. This this was an A for me. I thought it was a waste of a, a Ace Austin title reign though. I really did because his first title reign was really good. Uh, for it to be this short this time around, and he's uh, really one of your young stars that doesn't even need the title to, to do some interesting stuff. I thought this was a waste of putting the title on him. It was just, hey, let's get people on the pay-per-view. All right, so the second match of the night was Violent by Design versus Willie Mack, Eddie Edwards, James Storm, and Chris Saban. Uh, Eddie, uh, excuse me, not Eddie Edwards, but Eric Young was un- unable to compete. Uh, he was injured legitimately, and we knew that there was going to be most likely some kind of surprise here. The rumors, unfortunately, did surfaced throughout the day on social media and the, and the internet. But uh, the man formerly known as Big Kaz, Colin Cassidy, Kaz Excel, now going by W. Morrissey. Uh, don't really care for that name, but uh, it's not my name, so uh, he can do whatever he wants. He was a replacement for Eric Young. He is not a member of Violent by Design. I think they made that very clear. They use that. They, they love to use the hire term hired gun. It gets used every episode. Uh, but he was a hired gun. 
for Eddie Edwards. And I fully expected them to win this match, and they did. He towers Joe Doring, which is crazy because Joe Doring's a big guy, and uh, he was towering him. I like seeing Eric Young stay on, uh, stay on screen, you know, sit down at the end of the ramp with a chair. I hope he continues to do that on episodes of Impact because he's such a big part of Violent by Design. There's no, there's no VBD without him. You know, he, they need him to cut those promos and, and things of that nature. So uh, I hope they continue um, to do that. A side note, really, Willie Mack, um, you know, as I said, I look at this set and it was just a lot of red, a lot of black. And then Willie Mack, who is a, a dark-skinned gentleman and wearing trunks the same color as all the red on the screen, I couldn't even make him out. Like, it just looked like a pair of trunks jumping around. Like, I, I couldn't even, uh, and you know, they don't have the best lighting in the world either. I wish they would brighten things up a little. I couldn't even see him, you know? So that was one of the aesthetics that was kind of bothering me about the match. Um, but the match, uh, I, I, it was okay. Um, I never really got into it. It kind of, it kind of uh, for the most part, stayed in the same gear. I really liked uh, Morrissey's time in the ring, though. He is, I mean, he's looking good. He's looking jacked. He's looking cut. He's just, he looks like a star. He, he really, truly does. He, he looked great out there. It's going to be interesting to see how Impact uh, handles him. You know, uh, they're, they're very quick to take a guy like uh, Madman Fulton and, okay, he needs a mouthpiece and he needs this. And, like, are they going to give him some manager or are they going to just, like, let him be, be that dude? So we'll see. It's, it's interesting, but this is an inter- a signing that I have interest. Uh, I have interest in. I want to see what they do with him. But I thought he really looked like and came off like a star. I give the match a B minus. Uh, it would have been a C plus had Eric Young been in this match because at that point it just wouldn't have been anything special. But the fact that I think they had a good surprise uh, entrant or a tag team partner gave it a B minus, which is awesome because. Every time they're like, hey, there's a surprise opponent, there's a surprise partner, there's a, you know, something like that. It's always just someone from the roster. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, the big show and Kane syndrome. Like, oh, you get a partner of your choice tonight. And then, the, oh, it's the big show, you know, or, or Kane's music. Like, at one point, at what point does it just not matter anymore, you know? I mean, Trey Miguel's been a surprise three times this year already. So it was nice to just get, like, a legitimate surprise here. But I give it a B-. minus. Um, my, Brian Myers, who I'm a big fan of, took on Matt Cardona. Uh, this is this is one of those matches where uh, the commentary helped it out quite a bit. They helped, you know, to tell the story, but to but to also be laser focused on what was going on in the ring. Because if um, again, if Josh Mal- Matthews was doing this, he would have been like, "But they have a podcast," you know. Like it just would it would have it w- it would have come across a lot worse. Um, I, I think Matt Stryker was able to kind of keep us. Keep us in tune, but this this storyline in general, because they do have that podcast, it was just very weird. Because they're always oh, they painted it as these guys get along great out of the ring, <laughs> but don't like each other in the ring, and that's that's an odd story for me. I hope they got this feud out of the way. I think it made sense to do it as soon as they did. I mean, how how could they not? You know, they can't avoid each other for months, so it made sense to do it when they did it. But God, I really hope it's out of their system. This match was not very good. Um, it just, thank God, it didn't go on after after the X Division match. Uh, it was in it was in the right place. the The placement of this match was good, um, but I I really didn't um I didn't enjoy it. the fake the fake crowd noise for this match was bad. Like they did a pretty good job throughout throughout the show. It didn't sound um, good here. I did like the ending quite a bit. Uh, it really looked like Matt Cardona got hurt when they showed the replay. So. Um, I mean, his knee really buckled, so either they just did a great job of executing that or he got hurt, but either way, I thought the, the ending came off great. Uh, you know, Brian Myers reaching down, oh, you're my boy, let me help you up, because uh, it fit the story. It hits him with the clothesline and then, you know, hits him with the roster cut, and, and it gets the win, so uh, I liked the ending quite a bit. Uh, that's what saved it from getting anything lower than a C plus, but I give it a C plus. Uh, Gia Miller's the backstage with Tony Khan, uh, and, and the whole. That's when they started announcing there's going to be two refs. Uh, came off came off very very heelish. Throughout this show, I'm thinking you know, Sw- Rich Swan just might pull this thing off. You know what I mean? Uh, but that wasn't the case. 
Next match, we got uh, Fire and Flava versus Jordan Grace and Rachel Ellering. Now, listen, I'm a massive Rachel Ellering fan. I truly think she's one of the best female talents in the world. I've been a fan for, for years. I didn't watch anything in NXT that she did because I don't watch NXT. I don't even know if she was, like, ever made it on screen, to be honest with you. I really have not a clue in hell. But uh, I'm a fan of hers, and I've, I've met her a couple times, had some good conversation with her. I was very happy for her to join Impact. I've been wanting her to join Impact for years, years and years. They've teased it a couple times, you know, because she did uh, – Jeff Jarrett brought her on for, like, two episodes, and everyone's like, oh, they got Rachel Ellering. She's like, no, I'm just there for a couple episodes. And then she did Knockouts Knockdown. Nothing nothing materialized, you know what I mean? So uh, I was happy to have her in the company, and uh, I liked the touch of having Jazz come down as their manager uh, or accompany them down to the ring. I knew at that point that they were going to win. I had a hard time believing that uh, they were going to lose. I hope Jazz sticks around with them. I think uh, I kind of like that. I like the the dynamic. Um, I like Kira's blue hair. Her, her, I mean, her new shade of blue. She looks great. Uh, she's she's to me just the the best uh, young star in the company as far as someone they've built from the ground up, uh, which is which isn't many, you know. But uh, I, I give you know I love what Kira does. Uh, this match was. N- I, I didn't. I was excited for it, and I didn't particularly enjoy it. I just thought there it was really sloppy. Uh, it was very slow, um, and I thought I thought Rachel looked a little slow in the ring, a little sluggish. Um, I don't know if if um, I know she wrestled in the AEW Women's Tournament, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know if she's like in ring shape. I have no idea. But I thought, um, you know, someone who I've seen wrestle quite a bit and I'm very high up on, and I've even said I think she's on par with Tessa Blanchard as a wrestling talent. Um, I thought she lo- she looked pretty sluggish here. But, you know, the match was just uh, – there was a couple things they tried to do that didn't quite work. But um, the, the cutter spot on the outside that they did was tremendous. That was, that was very well uh, – very well done. Um, but Fire and Flavors looked better, um, so I just think I just think the uh, the chemistry just wasn't there between these four girls. We're, we're most likely going to see them continue to fight each other because there's no knockouts, uh, especially in the tag team division. So we're most likely going to continue um, very very much like with Havoc and Nevea. They're probably going to compete in a series of one on one matches. I would I would bet my house that. Uh, Rachel Ellering is probably going to wrestle one of them one-on-one this Tuesday. I'm fairly certain that'll happen. I give this match a, a C plus. I was uh, excited for it because, you know, again, big, big Ellering fan, but I just thought it was, it, it was you know, I, it, it's unfair for me to say that as a wrestling fan and not someone that's actually uh, out there competing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it just was. As a fan, as a viewer, it was, uh, it was sloppy for me. So it gets a C plus, but Rachel Ellering's theme gets an A. Rachel Ellering and Jordan Grace won, and they are the tag team champions. Trey took on Sammy Callahan. This was one of the better builds uh, for a match on this whole entire card, and I think that I think the pay per view suffered from uh, the fact that the, they've been losing a lot of talents over the last several months and not replacing them. We've got so many of the same matches, and then they've done the Impact Plus shows where they go hard as hell with those cards. And then, I mean, they're just pay-per-view caliber cards. And then as all of a sudden, here's a real pay-per-view. And it's like, uh, what, what matches are we going to do? So, um, <coughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. But this match here had one of the better builds. Um, you know, it, it's been, been telling a, a good story. And, but the story told, who, told us who the winner was going to be. When it's not about passion and, and all that, like, you know, when you have a last man standing, they're not going to have Trey lose and show that he has no, you know, doesn't have that <laughs> passion to get up, but uh, th- this was this was good, and th- they're going to continue to push Trey. He wasn't going to lose, considering that MSK won the N- NXT Tag Team Championships. Like Impact is going to battle that. They're they're going to be like, oh, we're going to they're going to push those guys. We're going to push Trey. Like Trey's not going to job. Trey's not going to probably lose a whole lot on Impact. And um, this this character is a lot more enjoyable than Trey. You guys know I wasn't a Rascals fan. Um, but I but I like this version of Trey, and I think it works quite a bit. I like Trey a lot, and he's he's one of the the rising stars, and he got a great win. Sammy Callahan loses a lot on pay per view and big matches. I don't 
at some point he has to get a little I don't think the losses hurt him too much. Like when he was in OVE, those losses hurt OVE a lot. I mean, they didn't beat anybody. But it, but as a solo guy, singles guy, you know, what I mean, it works. Um, he, he has a way of maintaining his relevancy. I liked him introducing the wrench into the match, um, and I thought the spot at the end where he thought he trapped Trey under the, uh, the steps, and then you know, Trey came out. I knew he was going to do that. I'm sure you did too. But uh, I thought it was a great. Great, and if, even if it wasn't a huge spot, you know, just kind of going through a table, these these last man standing matches are always having to outdo do themselves, outdo each other, I should say, to where the, the final spots are usually so just crazy, you know, and, and they, they kept it pretty simple here. But uh, I give this match an A. Uh, they, they, they really did a good job with it, good job with the story. And we'll see where Sammy Callahan moves on from here. I, I would imagine Trey's going to move on and, and do something different at this point. So we'll see. I bet we see a random Trey versus Josh Alexander match. This this uh, I did say Tuesday earlier, right? Impacts on Thursday now. I bet we see those two fight. That would be one of the best X Division matches they can put on. But I, I'm willing to bet money we get that on uh, for free on television uh, within the month uh, for no reason. So uh, after this was Swan backstage with Gia Miller, which I thought you know again I talked about at the top uh, really connected with the audience in my opinion. So the next match here, the Good Brothers versus Finn Juice. I wasn't super interested in the match to begin with, so you know maybe I'm unfair in how I rate this. But I would have. It would just been more exciting if they wrestled each other for the first time. You know, uh, the whole like we're taking the titles to Japan, and that made sense if, if Good Brothers were going to get the titles back now. You know, like okay, they got the little tour of Japan and everything. Like, but guess what? The Good Brothers lost this match. <laughs> Finn Juice won. They're still the tag team champions. So now the world title and the tag team titles aren't even on the show. So, uh, Mr. Josh Alexander, you're really going to have to carry this uh, this company for a little bit as you're going to be the lone male champion. Uh, maybe at this point the X Division can be a legitimate uh, mid-card title. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe they're going to start, you know, if you watch AEW, like the TNT title routinely main events the show. Maybe the X Division is going to start championship is going to start maining eventing the show, but then you you got to open it up to more people. You know, they say, oh, it's, it's the mid card title. No, it's not, because not everyone in the mid card fights for it. You know what I mean? So, um, this match just didn't really pique my interest. I, I never, I, I felt like it never really got out of second gear. You know, it just, it just never, it just never got there. Um, and I thought, I thought it was inevitable that the Good Brothers were going to win, but they didn't. Um, and this, this one gets a C from me. And then Gia Miller was backstage with John, Don Callis. Great little backstage interview. Again, I'm hearing Don Callis talk thinking, yo, Rich Swan might win this thing. So uh, Deanna, took on, Deanna Parasa took on Tennille Dashwood. Now, it might sound like I'm saying a lot of negative things about this show. It was just a good show for me. This wasn't hard to kill. Hard to kill, you know. I, I always say, like, when you when you hear me say something is good, you you better believe that that it, it was good. That I truly feel it was good. Like, you're never gonna just hear me say, "Oh, everything was great, everything was dandy." There's podcasts out there if you want to hear that. That like everything impact does. Listen to those. But I want my words to matter. Just like I said, the ref bumps need to matter. My words, I want them to matter. So when I say something was badass, something was good, something was great, you best believe that's what I think. Deanna versus Tennille. Um, it was probably the worst knockouts title match I have seen in years. I was real. I was. I'm sit. I was sitting here after for about 15 minutes trying to think, what match have I seen that that rivaled this for the for the knockouts championship? I enjoy them pointing out, hey, these two girls are zero and zero. They haven't wrestled each other in Impact. You know, um, I, I enjoy that I, because I love fresh matches. You know, I talk about that quite a bit. Uh, quite a bit. Um, what hurt to Neil Dashwood here, well, what hurt the match in general is because you had two heels going at it. So you, it, it's, I talked about the last match not getting out of second gear. Like, that's usually how a heel versus heel match is. Like, it, it's, it's in second gear the whole time. So we got two matches in a row like that. And, you know, this way, you know, I talked about the tag team title being, match being a little sloppy. This was sloppy. This was, this was so... I was so bored watching this match, and um, I love Tennille Dashwood. I love her gimmick. I love Caleb. 
I mean, it was just so odd. Like, they're all heels, and they're mixing it up on the outside. And at first, at one point, I thought Tennille had the match one when she had the spotlight kick. And I was, I was like, cool. I, I like that. I mean, I want Tennille to be champion at some point. The way this match came off is that Tennille, like, this was her last match in Impact. That's how it came off to me. Because she got a, you know, Deanna wins the match. Let's get that out there. And then they're, like, attacking her, you know, the three girls stomping her off the match. Like, that's just so weird. Heel-on-heel behavior so odd. It was, uh, I don't know where Tennille can go f- from here. I don't know where she, what she could do after this. I really don't. I'm not saying she's, like, done with the company. I'm just saying, like, that's how that came off. That, uh, hey, this is your last match. We're going to give you a knockouts title match. Uh, get the champion over. They're going to treat you like shit after because whenever they do these run-ins, so after Taylor Wilde shows up after, every time they do that, every time they do a promo after a match, it's a company's way of saying, hey, that match you just watched was filler. It didn't matter. It meant nothing. So, you know, because Taylor Wilde, she didn't come out to save. What was she doing? coming out to save to Neil Dashwood? That didn't even make any sense. Um, she's clearly next in line for the knockouts title, which, again, uh, Impact's, Impact's been doing this forever. You're brand new to the company. You know, welcome. Here's a title shot to, you know, to welcome you. You may just win the title in your first match. But this, I just didn't enjoy this. But between a couple girls that I, I like quite a bit, I like Deanna Perrazzo a lot. I like Tenille Dashwood a lot. This match wasn't good. Um, and what hurt Tenille, I was going to make this point, what hurt her is that she had absolutely no momentum going into this. None. Like when she became the number one contender, she... She she did it in a, in a multi knockouts match. She did it in a, a cheap you know like Jordan Grace had the win. She tosses Jordan Grace out of the ring and then gets the pin. That is dancing by the numbers. Like if she's gonna be the number one contender for your pay per view, just have her win the match. Have her decisively win the match. And then her only match after that was against Susan, who they paint as a non wrestler. So that hurt her quite a bit. But this match gets a C minus for me. It just wasn't wasn't good. They announced that May 15th coming to Impact Plus is going to be Under Siege. I like that name. Um, June 12th is Against All Odds. And July is going to be Slammiversary. And they tease. They show the t- Samoa Joe and, you know, all these, all these uh, Chelsea Green, these departures, like they did last year. They did a great job building Slammiversary last year. So, uh, you know, let's hope for some more surprises. But I hope with Under Siege and Against All Odds, they don't, they don't go crazy again. You know, like they threw everybody on those cards, and they just they just went hard. You know, there was title changes, which you want you want title changes sometimes. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's they just they just went too hard, and I think they uh, ran out of steam for Rebellion a little bit. Um, but yes, overall, uh, the show gets a B for me. I think there was enough you know uh, enough matches that were A's. I don't think I give up anything a B. I think everything was either an A or a C, in one way, shape, or form. Um, so, which pretty much averages out to a, a B, right? So, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I did, I did mention earlier, and I completely forgot to say it, where I think they're going to go with Rich Swan after this. I really think there's going to be one of those ro- Road to Redemption storylines. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Impact locker room shows. I don't think they're going to turn their back necessarily, but shows a lot of disappointment in Rich Swan. I can see him going off TV for a while to, to find himself because he's, he's depressed, maybe drinking, you know, uh, they could tell a very interesting and deep story, do it without music in the background, but you could, you could tell a really good story. Um, you know, I think she, he has to be off TV for a while and then, you know, they can, uh, create some video packages. Um, but there's a, there's an interesting story that can be told here. You know, he can't just, most likely he's going to wrestle um, in two weeks with him and Willie Mack as partners. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, that's most likely what's going to happen, but uh, I think they have an opportunity here to really um, retool Rich Swan a little bit and uh, maybe maybe get that comeuppance against Kenny Omega one day. You know? It it only seems fair. Like, it, it hurt my heart seeing him get pinned at Hard to Kill, and it hurt my heart seeing him get pinned tonight. Um, but I'm pulling for you, Rich Swan. Uh, I think you've become my favorite wrestler in Impact over the course of this year. And um, I, I can't wait to see what happens on, on Impact this coming week. I want to see what kind of show they got for us and how they're going to 
uh, tell these stories going forward. So thanks for checking me out, guys. I was hoping to go a little sooner than this, but it's, you know, or a little quicker than this, I should say, but it's a little hard when you're talking a pay-per-view. So um, this is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be. I'm BQ. I'm out. Peace.